let's use our equation in a concrete example. Let's suppose we're interested in measuring the amount of potassium in a banana. A bananas are full of potassium, and we might be interested in measuring them in terms of milligrams of potassium per gram of banana. Typical potassium concentrations in banana are on the order of about 3.95 milligrams of potassium per banana. Uh, let's imagine we did four measurements and we get these kinds of numbers. Our equation for the standard deviation says that we should take the sum of the deviations between the average and individual values, square those, sum them up, divide by the number of measurements minus 1, take the square root of that. Well, we can take the average pretty easily here, and I'll just give you what I calculate, the 4.0025. I'm going to carry some extra digits here, and we'll talk about how to decide on how many to use later. Our equation says we're going to take the average, subtract the individual value from it. So let's calculate in a new column the difference between the average value and each entry from the first column. So 4.0 minus 3.95, and I'll just give you those numbers, are 0 0.0525. The difference between 4.0 and 4.02, okay, that's a negative number, 0, 1, 7, 5. The next is minus 0 0.1675. And then finally, this last is 0 0.1325. Okay, we're doing this by hand, so uh, it's easiest to do one operation at a time, make new column. Now let's square each of these values here. That's what our equation says. Each of those deviations will be squared. So let's take that previous column value and square each entry. So let's I'll just put those there. So I'm going to square that number 0 0.0027565625. Now let me just write the rest of the values down as they would appear on my calculator. Okay, and there we have the data. Now, our expression says we're going to need the sum of this column. Okay, so the sum the sum is equal to 0 0.048675. And once again, I'm just carrying extra digits so I don't bias things by rounding in an earlier step, or in a, an early step. Okay, so that's the sum. We take that sum and divide by n minus 1. So the sum divided by n minus 1 would be this number. Divided by n, there are four measurements. So n is 4 minus 1. And we're going to take the square root. Let's do that all in one operation. Let's take the square root. So the square root of this should give us the estimate of the standard deviation for this sample of 4. And uh, numerically, Working that out on the calculator, I get 0.1273, and there's some more digits. Okay. Now, what should I report? Well, typically, uh, you report the average value for your measurements, and you give the standard deviation, but a common way of doing this without repeating the words average and standard deviation is to give the average plus or minus the standard deviation. So typically we would report 4.0. And now I'm going to make a decision about how many significant figures to use. You'll notice in the standard deviation, the first significant digit shows up in a particular place. So that means that our average is uncertain in that digit. Everything to the right of it 
is meaningless in, in actual fact. So we should report only one uncertain digit. And so I'll stop and then include plus or minus the standard deviation. Now, this looks kind of curious. I'm going to include three digits. That's usually what one does. And that's because we often use the standard deviation in calculations. Even though it might seem kind of silly that we're going to have this much precision in a number that's just an estimate of an uncertainty. It sounds really uh, kind of questionable indeed. But this is typically what's done in order to keep from biasing when you uh, use the standard deviation in other calculations. So both the measured average quantity and the standard deviation has the same units as the thing that we're trying to measure in milligrams of potassium in grams of banana. Of course, you probably have a button on your calculator to calculate the standard deviation. If so, learn how to use it. Be sure you use the right definition for the standard deviation. On this calculator, there's sigma for the calculation for a population standard deviation. There's also the equation with n minus 1 in the divisor for a population of a sample with n less than 30. Often we do this sort of calculation with a spreadsheet. In that case, it's very simple, but you must be able to decide which equation or formula is appropriate. In this case, we're using a small data set. So this is the expression for calculating using n minus 1 in the denominator.